Hello, my friends. It's Nick, the ASMR nerd. And today I've got a mechanical keyboard unboxing and typing test video for you guys with a keyboard that I am very excited about. In my last video, I alluded to the fact that I have a handful of keyboards left for you guys to see this year in 2022. This is going to be a December full of mechanical keyboards. It's Keybus, Keyboard Christmas, um, and this is one of them. Uh, today, we're taking a look at the Halo 65 mechanical keyboard from a company called NuFi. NuFi. If that name is familiar to you, it could be because I took a look at one of their keyboards before. This here is the NuFi Air 75, which is a low profile keyboard. Look how thin that keyboard is, but it is mechanical. It uses uh, Gatoron Brown low profile switches and has these uh, beautiful low profile keycaps that NuFi uh, fashioned it with. And uh, this keyboard has gained a little bit of a cult following over the last year or so. Uh, it has become quite popular and I can see why. I really uh, enjoyed uh, this board, uh, unboxing it and, and using it. So uh, when NuFi reached out to me and said, hey, we're coming out with a full profile mechanical keyboard uh, and we'd like you to check it out, how can I say no? So uh, they sent one over. This is a sponsored video, so it's not a formal review. They are paying me, they being NuFi, to show you this keyboard, but nonetheless, I am very excited about it because, like I said, their Air 75 was really, really nice, is really nice, and I'm excited to check out their foray into full height keyboards. So uh, the Halo 65 has some pretty cool stuff going for it. Uh, it's got, of course, a 65% layout, which is compact but functional. Uh, it's got hot swap sockets. It's got some advanced dampening to improve the sound and the feel. And it has uh, a 360 degree RGB light. Uh, that is the, the halo lighting around the edge. Um, but additionally, NuFi has sent over their frosted acrylic wrist rest, which sits just down here. And uh, the light from the halo lighting shines and diffuses through this frosted acrylic wrist rest for a really beautiful effect. Um, so I'm really keen to see how that looks. Uh, in addition, we've got lots of functionality for connectivity. We've got wired uh, 2.4 gigahertz wireless and Bluetooth 5 um, wireless connectivity as well. And of course, full RGB backlighting, uh, software remapping, the whole bit. So, uh, but the real thing about new Fi's keyboards, at least that I experienced with the Air 75, is that uh, there's a real attention to detail in their design. There's clearly a lot of love that goes into designing these keyboards. I felt that with the Air 75, and I'm hoping that's the same case with the Halo 65. So without further ado, let's dive on in and check out NuFi's Halo 65. And here we have the NuFi Halo 65 in box. And it may look somewhat unassuming to start with. It's got a very minimalistic aesthetic, doesn't it? We've got a depiction of the keyboard in the top right here. We've got Halo 65 with a damper kit on the left here. The damper kit is presumably all the silicone dampening that they've got going on in this board. NuFi, bottom left, designed by NuFi Studio, front and center at the bottom, and then their website over here. And that's it on the front. Very uh, 
uh, reserved matte gray background here, but there is more, as you'll see in a moment. Uh, the simple front uh, does not prepare you for the back. Um, we do have some information around the sides though too, so let's look at that first before we get to the back. Uh, here we've got a whole bunch of features listed. Halo 65 key features. KOP, PBT, keycaps. The KOP is their, uh, their own profile. It's got rounded edges and somewhat flat tops. Interested to check those out. I think it's probably similar to their low profile keycaps. Uh, on the Air 75, but instead in a full, full light uh, profile. Uh, we've got 2.4 gigahertz uh, wireless connectivity and Bluetooth 5.0 to give you lots of options. This is going to be higher performance. This is going to be more flexible, more, uh, you know, uh, useful for a variety of devices. Hot swap sockets, always good to see. Halo lighting effects, so I've got a 360 degree RGB uh, light, uh, as we will see. Side lighting is part of that, 65% layout, so fairly compact, but does include um, some of those useful nav cluster keys on the right side, and we get the dedicated arrow keys, as we'll see. Aluminum case, always nice. Gateron G Pro V2 switches, if you choose, or uh, a handful of other more premium switches, which we will get to as well, um, including the Baby Kangaroo, the BBK switches, which I'm really keen to, to show you guys. Uh, damper kit, 4000 milliamp hour battery, which NuFi claims is good for about 240 hours of continuous use. That's presumably without the backlight on, although I'm not sure. And both Mac and Windows compatible. Uh, over here, just do this. Gives us a little information about NuFi Studio. Small uh, company founded by a group of boring guys. <laughs> That's fun. When we can't make interesting products, this studio will no longer exist. <laughs> That's all it says. You know, and I can get beyond that mission statement. Over here, only fun products are worth creating. I like it. I definitely like it. Um, the customer support address. Then, speaking of fun products, here's where things get interesting. We've got our keyboard waifu around the back. Our Air 75 also had a keyboard waifu. Um, and I'm glad that NuFi is continuing the the tradition with uh, the the Halo 65. It's actually like a really nicely done piece of art. Like it's pretty impressive. Um, and we get a little more information on the right hand side here. Keyboard layout is ANSI. Um, the package contents includes the keyboard, the cable, 2.4 gigahertz receiver, 17 extra keycaps. Very nice. Seven extra switches, a nice back in, a sticker, a keycap and switch puller, and a quick start guide. The whole thing weighs about a kilogram. One kilogram. Designed in Shenzhen. Shen, 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 wow, I'm having a hard time here. Shenzhen, assembled in China. All right. Check out that keyboard. All right, uh, let's uh, open this thing up. So I believe this is a slip cover. Oops. I think we're gonna have to slide this thing out. Let's flip it back over. And let's just see if we can slide this off.
box inside. Once again, just has a simple uh, depiction of the keyboard on it with some of the key accent colors highlighted. And this, I think, opens like so. Oh, like we've got a little... Oh, that's fun. On the back, it has a picture of the back of the keyboard. So let's do this. There's no doubt that New Fi does pay a lot of attention to style. They like stylish design. It's clear that a lot of love goes into these products. I felt the same with the Air 75. A lot of thought and consideration goes into these keyboards. Okay, so here we have a quick start guide. Connection mode selection, wireless device connection. Oh, the stickers, you guys. They said one sticker. This is not one sticker. This is so many stickers. Not only do we have our beautiful keyboard waifu in sticker form, but we have chibi versions of our keyboard waifu, which are super cute. <laughs> like uh they make really great twitch emotes or something and a new fi sticker as well a couple of them that's actually beyond adorable um and i think that's all that's in here but let's just open it up to be sure Guys, I'm calling it right here. There's a, a, a ages old joke uh, around these parts, inside joke on this channel, uh, about a product many years ago that I reviewed that had Iron Man stickers included in it. And at the time I said that was pretty much the most awesome sticker pack in that you could have. I think, I think this might actually take the crown. Uh, these might be more awesome than Iron Man stickers. Um, so the quick start guide covers, uh, connectivity, gives us the layout and secondary functions, tells us about backlight settings, the halo light, edge lighting, and side light, and function key switching stuff, battery indicator, factory reset. And, and, just in case you haven't had enough of our uh, mascot girl, our keyboard waifu, um, uh, they give you a poster too. Um, and I'm like, I'm serious, like, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm saying this like slightly in jest, but mostly seriously, like the art is really nice. Um, and I, I, I do appreciate that New Fi goes the extra mile to include this kind of stuff because it's just fun. It's just fun, you know, and it sets them apart from a lot of other manufacturers. So, good on them. All right. So, uh, here's what we're really here for, though. The keyboard. Uh, it comes with a... A... Uh, 
keyboard cover. Oh, and look at that. They actually tell you, they give you the phonetic pronunciation. Turns out I've had her right this whole time. New Phi. New Phi. There have been times when I've been tempted to call them a Newfie, which is what we here in Canada call Newfoundlanders. <laughs> residents of one of our easternmost provinces, Newfies, but no, uh, Newfi. And if you want a little dust cover, uh, this will do that for you too. Let's put that away in there. Here is the keyboard in uh, crinkly plastic. Wow! That is much heavier than I expected. There's actually a lot more aluminum in this keyboard than I expected, you guys. This has a lot of weight to it. Also, as you might note, this is um, in white. They do also have a black colorway, which is equally gorgeous. Um, we have some really fun accent colors here on the stock caps. Um, that sort of mint green up there. This goldenrod color, I guess. And then this bold, bright red, ready orange on the enter key. Um, but we do get the extra key caps as well. So let's actually put this aside for the moment. As much as I am keen to actually get to it because it feels amazing. But let's put it aside just for the moment, and we will just take a look at the other pack-ins here so that uh, we can get those sorted. Accessories. Oh, got a little trap door. Uh, the keyboard itself, nicely protected. The cardboard on all sides. Big thumbs up to NewFi for all the recyclable packaging I'm seeing here. Um, there is, there is some foam underneath, but uh, a lot of this looks easily recyclable. So this appears to be probably our full uh, Oh, it's a troubleshooting guide in a variety of languages. That's good. Put that over there. And then at the bottom, underneath, we have our various accessories, including our 17 extra keycaps, a switch puller, and a variety of extra switches and a cable. It comes out just in this little plastic packet here. Let's move the box aside and let's take a closer look at these. Okay, so uh, this looks like it probably just... Oh, we've actually got a little couple of seals keeping it closed. So we'll just have to do this. Gatoron G Pro, Gatoron G 2.0 Pro switches. Um, we've got the standard red. It's your typical linear switch. We've got the brown, which again is your typical tactile. It's a light tactile kind of switch, but I will say much smoother than a Cherry MX Brown. 
my son. A little bit of spring ping, but it's not scratchy in the least, which is great. Um, I'm not sure if Gateron's G Pro switches are actually factory lubed or not. I do know their BBK switches are, and we will look at those shortly. Um, is G Pro blue? So the keyboard is offered with all of these, I believe. G Pro yellow, which is a heavier linear, but actually really nice. Actually really nice. Speed Silver with a shorter actuation and travel distance. And then some kind of white switch, maybe? I'm actually not sure what this one is. It's a linear. Always nice to have a little switch sampler. And then this. Oh, this is their BBK switch. Okay, so they give you one here as well. But we have a, a variety of them over there as well. Um, a, a container, I should say. Um, and the BBK switch is a tactile switch. Um, but it's got a stronger tactile response than something like the brown. And uh, it's quite snappy. Um, it's also got some sound dampening built in and uses more premium materials overall for uh, a better feel and sound profile. Uh, Two-stage spring, so it's got a really satisfying snap back. It's uh, characterized as being snappy, energetic, satisfying, and it definitely is snappy. The, uh, the bump is quite pronounced up at the top, and it's almost right at the top of the actuation, or the travel distance, like very little pre-travel. And then uh, the return force is very snappy. And it's got a really nice dampened sound. I think those are going to sound really nice uh, on the board. So let it go with that. Um, so, quite a selection there of uh, switches. And I should point out though, the, the Gatoron and switch, uh, the, the BBK switches are uh, manufactured in collaboration between Nufi and Gatoron. So, uh, that's pretty cool. And here we have a variety of keycaps. This is Nufi's KOP profile. As you can see, it's got very rounded edges. Rounded edges for this kind of rounded looking top. And then a slightly scooped, slightly scooped top profile, just to cradle the finger. But, um, you know, the top is reminiscent of the scooping on OEM keycaps, but the shape of it is quite a bit different. These are double shot PBT, a nice and thick. So PBT is of course a premium plastic used in, uh, you know, nice keycaps. Um, and the great thing about it is it's nice and scratch resistant and oil resistant. So it doesn't shine up with finger oils uh, over time. It'll maintain that nice matte appearance. So we're given a variety of options here if we want to swap out the accent keys. Uh, with plain white ones, we can. Or, if we want to swap on a full set of different accent colors, we can. If we want all our accents to be uh, mint green or in the red here, we can do that. Although the space bar, our only options are that kind of goldenrod yellow or white. But, nonetheless, we have quite a bit of variety. Um, you'll also notice that we have some Windows-specific uh, keycaps here, because by default, it looks like it comes with the Mac uh, versions, variants on it. Here we have just a fairly run-of-the-mill switch and keycap puller, but it is of the better quality wire style, so happy to see that. And our sleeved uh, braided USB cable here. 
nice cloth sleeving, fabric sleeving, feels uh, quite robust. Uh, USB Type-C on the keyboard end, USB Type-A on the device end. No specific branding or anything on it, but it'll do the trick. It looks nice, it feels good. So that uh, covers the extras that new Fi has included with the keyboard. So it's time to finally, finally take a look at the actual keyboard. And I'm really keen because like, like I said, this thing is significantly heavier than I expected. And it looks and feels so nice, you guys. So let's open this up. is open here. I'm not sure what that's about. But we're gonna wanna do this. So great. Subtly, we have engraved new Phi, which is nice. If we look at the edges here, we can see a couple of the features. Um, one is that I believe, it's actually really hard to see, but I believe that between these two pieces, between the aluminum on the top and this ABS plastic on the bottom, I believe we get that halo light effect coming through there. It's a fairly narrow space though, so I'm really curious to see how that actually is going to look in practice, but I'm pretty sure that's where we get that lighting effect. Um, the uh, sides are very plain, but we do have this sort of scalloped look here, which actually is apparently inspired by um, ionic columns, like uh, Greek columns, you know how they're sort of um, fluted up the side like that. Uh, apparently that was the inspiration behind this design. It looks really nice. Um, on the back here we have USB Type-C connectivity, we have a mode switch, and we have Ah, of course, it's our USB dongle uh, in matching color tone. I really appreciate that. Um, and uh, I always love when uh, manufacturers include a little receptacle for the USB dongle. So, um, because of the matching color and the fact that it has a receptacle with the keyboard, I feel like it's unlikely that you're going to lose it or get it mixed up with, uh, you know, a dongle from another keyboard. I always call it a dongle. Some people call it a receiver, but it's the same, same difference, you know, same thing. Um, that lovely patterning comes right around the front edge. 
if we move to the back of the keyboard, we can see we have non-slip feet here. One, two, three, four. Again, color matched. We have the new Fly logo engraved on the back. The back is ABS plastic, but it feels very high quality. It's got a really nice matte finish to it. It feels dense. It feels quality. We have some flip out legs, feet for height adjustment. Also color matching. We've got one, two stages of height adjustment. And these of course have the anti-slip feet as well on them. And the keyboard itself does have a built-in angle to it, as you can see, but it's pretty, pretty minor. Just a couple degrees. Um, this open sticker presumably is for removing this plastic off of the logo or the, you know, uh, keyboard info. So there it says new five, new five studio, Halo 65, 67 key, a wireless mechanical keyboard. Yeah, some certifications and logos and such. And that is that. It's a very sharp looking keyboard. Elegant, one might say. However, that's not the entire story, of course. We do have whatever's going on underneath here. This keyboard does have hot swap sockets, and truth be told, I'm actually not sure kind of switches this board has on it stock. You see, I asked for the BBK switches because they sounded very interesting and I'm always game for trying out a nice premium tactile switch. But Newfi actually sent over the BBK, the baby kangaroo switches separately in this little container. So that makes me think that the switches on the board are probably something else. So let's find out what's on the board, shall we? Let's check under the delete. Okay, so they're linears. There's no tactile bump. They're definitely linears. I'm going to guess they're probably Gatoron um, reds, but let's see. Let's see, let's see. Bingo. So, um, I don't know why that's what they've done, but they've given me a whole complement of Gatoron Red switches here. Just like the one that we saw in a little preview package there. Um, and then they've included the BBK switches separately. That's okay though. Um, what I'll probably do is when it comes time for the typing test, I will do some typing with the Gatoron red linears, and then I will swap them out for the BBKs and do some typing with those so you can hear it both ways, which is kind of a nice thing. Um, as before, these are double shot PBT. The double shot part means it's made of two pieces of fused plastic, the white outer and the black inner. That means that they're never going to wear out. It's not just a label printed on top here. It's actually just two pieces of fused plastic, which is very nice. Um, and of course, it is hot swappable. So that means we can pop out this here switch nice and easily. We don't have to uh, wrestle it out or anything, it pops out. Uh, there's no soldering required um, or desoldering to get the switches out, of course. Underneath, we do have something kind of interesting. We have a silicone pad, as you can see. So this um, keyboard has a lot of dampening in it. It's got a silicone pad on top of the PCB. It's got one I believe between the plate and the PCB, which is pretty hard to see, but you can kind of make it out in there, hopefully. There you go. You can see some silicone dampening pad in there. 
Um, and then I believe there's another one underneath the PCB that gives it its weight and hopefully dampens the sound in the bottom of the case as well. Uh, so we've got a lot of dampening going on. You can see that uh, the sockets support three or five pin switches, which is great for the flexibility. And of course, we have a north facing LED above the socket there. Um, so that gives you lots of flexibility. It should look good with any kind of uh, backlit shine through caps as well. And the hope is that all that sound dampening makes for a really controlled, thawky, pleasing sounding typing experience. Now, speaking of dampening and a pleasing sounding typing experience, NuFi has gone the extra mile with their space bar. They uh, evidently spent quite a bit of time tuning their space bar sound. Now, space bars typically sound pretty hollow, even on a, a really nice, um, you know, tuned uh, setup with uh, carefully tuned stabilizers. The space bar can still sound quite hollow. So, uh, NuFi has put a uh, silicone dampener inside the space bar to improve the acoustics. We will look at that in a moment, but actually before we do that, let's listen to the stabilized keys here. Um, as I always say, the stabilized keys are a really key part of um, the sound of a keyboard. Uh, the stabilizers are, of course, underneath the sides of the long keys here. They prevent them from wobbling. If they're left untuned, untreated, they can sound quite um, rattly. They can have a lot of ticking and rattling and clattering to them. I'm really hoping that with the attention that NuFi has paid to all the other elements of this board, they've also paid some good attention to their stabilizers by patting them, by uh, lubing them, by uh, maybe clipping them. So let's see how they sound. It's really tough to do stabilizers well from the factory, it seems. So, but I have high hopes for new fi here. Let's see. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> that's really good. Uh, they feel smooth. It's just only the faintest hint of rattle, and clearly they're bottoming out on a silicone pad. That feels fantastic. That's like a solid four out of five. Let's see the enter or hear the enter. Nearly perfect. Excellent. Good consistency from side to side. And in the center, the action is smooth. Those sound fantastic. The shift key not actually stabilized because it's the shortened right shift here to accommodate the 65% layout, which actually I didn't talk about. But as you can see, we do have, um, you know, a slightly um, compressed right shift to accommodate the arrow keys, the dedicated arrow keys. Then we have a column with our uh, handful of nav cluster functions, including delete, page up, page down, and end. That looks great. Um, and in a nice little design uh, flourish here, we've got a little gap left. Um, rather than trying to cram, you know, uh, three one U size keys in here, they kept the 1.25 U and then left a gap, which gives it some more um, interesting visual identity, perhaps. Okay, we were doing the stabilizers. Let's keep going. On the left shift, Oh my gosh, that's amazing. <laughs> Virtually perfect, again, like I would say these are five out of five. Left shift and enter. Those are some really nice sounding stabilized keys. And finally, the space bar, notoriously the hardest one to tune and to have sound good. Let's see if new Fi's attention to the space bar has paid off. Interesting. 
Interesting. Okay. Oh, there we go. It actually wasn't quite uh, depressing properly. It was, uh, I think the stabilizers were binding a little bit. And interestingly, there's a different switch on the space bar. This is a tactile switch. This might be a BBK switch. I can feel a tactile bump and it feels pretty springy. Okay, so... There's a bit of tick on that spacebar. Now let's say compared to the other stabilized keys, it doesn't sound quite as nice. There is still some hollowness going on there, although it is dampened compared to what it could be. But there's a bit of rattle there. I'm really curious what's going on under this key. Let's find out. Um, it's kind of tough to get the spacebar off sometimes, but we're just going to have to do it kind of one side and then the other. One side and then the other. There we go. Okay. So, yeah, there is clearly a BBK switch underneath there. Also, nice attention to detail. The stabilizers are color matched with the minty green that we've got going on here. That's really neat. Um, we have some significant silicone dampening going on. We have one and two pads right there. And um, yeah, that BBK switch interestingly mounted on the space bar, whereas everything else is clearly gear on red linears. Wonder what made them decide to do that. Of course, if I wanted to, I could swap it out, but uh, we won't do that. Um, let's put this back on. Interesting. It's better than stock, or better than untreated, but it's not quite there. There's a bit of rattle going on. And, uh, I suspect this space bar is going to sound about the same. Uh, but nonetheless, a really impressive showing overall from the stabilized keys here. With a little bit of tuning after the fact, you could definitely uh, dampen the acoustics of this bass bar some more and, uh, and improve that sound even further. But uh, overall, really, really impressed with the sound and the feel of what's going on here. Um, slightest bit of creaking right off the bat, but once it's got the creaks out, it basically stops and there's no flex to speak of. Not whatsoever. It's very rigid, actually. So that is our uh, examination of the Halo 65 here. Um, however, there's a couple other things to look at. We've got those BBK switches, which we'll take another quick look at, and we have a wrist rest that is designed to pair exclusively with this keyboard, or you could use it with anything, but it's, it's designed to look really nice with this one. So let's get on with that. So once again, we've got the BBK switches here. Uh, and uh, it says here, Gator on, cross, new find. Gator on, baby kangaroo mechanical switches, tech type tactile. Operating force, 59 gram force. Um, interestingly, they claim two millimeters of pre-travel. I guess it's two millimeters of pre-travel before actuation, but the bump itself happens right at the top. It's probably less, you know, probably like a fraction of a millimeter of pre-travel before the bump, the tactile event. Total travel, 3.4 millimeters, so actually a bit less a bit less than a conventional Jerry MX clone, which typically have four millimeters total travel. Uh, they come in this nicely sealed container, which, there we 
go. It was so sealed, it didn't want to open. <laughs> and, um... Got a lot of them here. They've got, uh, a really pleasing light green stem. Kind of a kiwi green, almost, but a bit paler than that. I believe it's P.O.M., which is a common, um self-lubricating uh, plastic used in premium switch stems and um, some kind of opaque white bottom housing, perhaps nylon, um, but uh, it makes for a nice thocky bottom out. I think that sounds pretty good. Uh, the upstroke also has a really nice appealing sound. A nice lock to it uh, of its own. And um, like I said, they're very springy. Really nice, sharp, tactile vent at the top. And then smooth travel. These do come pre looped. Um, and then a very springy rebound. Uh, of course, the clear polycarbonate top housings for the RGB to shine through for funsies. Let's open up one of these. It's always kind of fun to take a look inside the switch and see what's going on in there. You'll be able to see the two-stage spring. Um, so we will pop this in here. We will do this. Sometimes it doesn't quite want to open. There we go. Okay, so top housing here, like I said, clear polycarbonate. Um, here is our stem, our POM stem. You can see and feel it's lightly lubricated, but only very lightly. And then we've got an extra long two-stage spring here. You can see made of two individual springs. And then we've got our leaf contact mechanism here. And our bottom housing. So, we can put it back together here. I think the additional length of this dual spring probably contributes significantly to that nice, strong rebound. There. There we have it. It's a nice feeling little switch. So. Um, I'm really excited to get those onto the keyboard to see how they sound uh, once the whole board has got those PBK switches on it. All right, um, and that is an option uh, when you buy the keyboard, you can uh, select the BBK option. Presumably for you guys, they will come pre-installed. I think they probably just came separately for me because uh, this is an early review sample. And um, maybe they didn't have them installed at the factory yet. Okay, the last thing that we're going to look at here is the wrist rest. New Fi Studio two-tone wrist rest for Halo Series keyboard. Uh, this is the Ionic white version. They also have one with a black um, front edge here. Focus on the fun in function. Love it, you guys. So, um, what this does that's pretty cool is, let's just cut the seal here. Oh, how is this? This is actually a little tricky. So this 
Lazarus Rest is made out of two materials. setup 
And the first thing that strikes me, of course, is this beautiful wrist rest and the way it diffuses the light from the edge lighting there. Um, the halo lighting, if you will. Uh, and you can see if we just pull away the wrist rest here, you can see that narrow halo light around the edge. Uh, it goes 360 degrees. You can see it lights up my hands on the sides there as well. And uh, it casts this light through the wrist rest. Uh, this is currently set to maximum brightness and the effect is certainly visible uh, in a dark room, although not uh, super bright. So it's, it's pretty subtle. Um, and then we also have this nice interior halo lighting. Uh, which is quite unique because they actually have the backlight off by default on the main keys and just this halo light to uh, really accentuate that effect. Um, but there is backlighting, uh, per key backlighting on each key, uh, and we can also control the halo light. Um, and it looks like there's some control of this little indicator light up here as well, which normally just gives you uh, indications of various things like battery charge level, um, connectivity mode, whether it's wired like it is now, or wireless, which uh, incidentally I have tested. It works great. Um, but uh, also things like caps lock. If I press caps lock, changes color, changes back. So it's kind of a multi-purpose indicator light that uh, shows a whole bunch of things. Um, but let's let's step through some of the backlighting options. So by default, uh, the, the backlight on the key presses uh, is actually this reactive style where when you press it down, hopefully you can see that, it lights up briefly and then fades out. It actually looks really nice, doesn't it? It's kind of a, a neat thing. very pretty. And uh, again, the fact that they're off when they're not being pressed really accentuates the halo light. Um, but uh, we can uh, adjust uh, the backlight settings with function left arrow. So some kind of sine wave. Um, looks like a rotating color. Bear in mind, this is just the backlight I'm adjusting, not the halo lighting right now. So uh, sort of rolling colored waves, waves uh, going out from the middle. We can also adjust the brightness with function up and down. So at maximum brightness, it looks like this. And you can see the indicator light flashes to show that we're at maximum brightness. It goes down in a few steps. That's off. It flashes again to show we've hit minimum. So I guess off and then one, two, three, Four. So four steps of brightness, five if you include off. Um, and then function right arrow actually changes the color, I believe. Which maybe doesn't do anything in this particular one since it's a rainbow wave, but let's um, let's try what is this? Ah, uh, this is a uh, probably a user programmed mode. Uh, there is, uh, I believe, software. Uh, for this keyboard. Uh, I'm not going to be looking at it here in the video today, but I will include a link in the video description so that you guys can download that if you like. Um, but presumably the software does give access to per key uh, configurable backlighting where you could, you know, specify if you want the WASD or, or various other uh, keys illuminated. Um, this appears to be off, I think, just fully off backlight. Uh, here's a solid color. We should probably be able to switch between. There you go. So now here we can switch between colors with function right. Back to a rainbow mode. Uh, breathing mode. Sort of fading through colors. I must say the uh, 
The unique profile of these keycaps looks really nice, the way they catch the light and then the tops are very dark, but there's this really nice diffuse um, lighting around the keys, which I think is really appealing. Uh, this is another reactive mode where it shoots out little, uh, you know, beams of light to each side when you press a key. That's a pretty good, pretty good demo there. And um, more colored waves, it looks like. Okay, another reactive mode that sends out bigger ripples. And uh, this is kind of like a raindrops mode, I guess, or twinkling mode. Horizontal colored wave. And we're back to that initial reactive mode, that kind of glow and fade mode. I really like. I think I'll keep it on that. But in addition to the backlighting, we can also control uh, the halo lighting around the edge. So we do that by holding function and then H, I believe, and then right arrow, which is a slightly awkward way to do it, but what are you going to do? So there, we've now changed the halo lighting to, looks like fading uh, through colors. Uh, this looks like it might be just a solid color, and if we press right, I'm willing to bet we can configure the color of this. Indeed we can. Like so. And... This is a breathing, a breathing mode for the halo light. And then this appears to just be off, so you can just turn off the halo light and have just the the backlight, but then you miss out on the beautiful effects on the wrist rest, right? And then we're back to the default, which is this sort of color wave moving around the edge. So that looks pretty good, I would say. Uh, there's some other toggles on the secondary function layer, such as the ability to switch between Mac and Windows mode. By default, it's actually set to Mac mode. So, um, uh, but all that is detailed in the, the user guide. And um, I believe there's also some configurability for this little light up here. If we hold function, actually, let's just turn off. Let's turn off the uh, halo light just for a moment, just to make it easier to uh, see what's going on up here. So if we hold function, question mark, left. You can actually uh, play around with this light up here, which is kind of fun. Looks like there's a few different modes, or we can just turn it straight off. I'm assuming this is the default mode that we're back to now. Uh, let's get that halo light going again. There we go. And uh, there's also a factory reset, uh, which I think is function Mm, X, XB or something like that. I don't remember exactly. Again, it's in that quick start guide. Um, so uh, it offers a, a fair number of hardware level controls over backlighting, uh, halo lighting, brightness. Um, I think there's also effect speed controls under the function uh, period and comma. Uh, but uh, by default, the speeds on these effects seem to be pretty reasonable. They don't seem, you know, crazy fast or anything like that, except maybe that sine wave. Um, and overall, I really like the quality of the RGB lighting on this board. It's uh, nice and vivid, especially the warmer colors, which sometimes it feels like uh, cheaper LEDs don't render those warmer colors that well. Um, uh, nice and saturated is really what I would say, and um, and very soft. And I think the softness is due in part to the materials they're using, a lot of matte plastic and aluminum, and of course this frosted wrist rest, which makes it also kind of have this soft, diffuse look. Um, but the gradients look nice and smooth, and that's what's important. Again, I know that you've got some flicker going on in the camera there, 
I wish there was a better way to deal with that, but it's a very challenging technical problem with these kinds of reviews, actually. Some LEDs just do not play nice with the camera, but in person, it looks really good. So, uh, with all of that uh, looked at and done, it's time for the typing test. Now, I'll start off with uh, the uh, stock switches on here, the Gateron Reds. Um, and uh, just so you know, I did replace the uh, spacebar switch, which by default, for some reason, came with the BBK switch, um, which I know some people do like different switches on their spacebar, but that's not me. That ain't me. I like the same switches across my board. So I swapped in the Gateron Red on there. So we've got nice light linears um, uh, for our switches for the first part of the typing test. For the second part, I will swap out to a full board of those tactile uh, BBK switches with those snappy uh, bumps and that uh, thockier bottom out. I think those will be quite a bit louder. It'll be very interesting to hear the difference between the Gatoron G Pro 2.0 Reds and the BBK switches. Uh, I will label each one uh, during the typing test as well, so you can know what I'm typing on. All right, well, without further ado, let's get to the typing test.
All right, so uh, we've had a chance to really give this thing a good look and a good listen. You guys just heard the Gateron G Pro Red 2.0 switches, and then the Gateron Cross Nufi BBK or Baby Kangaroo tactile switches. Which one did you prefer? I'd be very curious to hear down in the comments. Personally, I really like the BBK switches. I think the sound is good. I think it's about equivalent between the Lanier's and the uh, the tactile BBKs. They're definitely louder, the BBK switches, uh, because of that little tactile bump that's quite sharp. When you go past that bump, you really slap into that bottom out. And so uh, it is pretty loud with those BBK switches on there, but it is so springy and snappy. The feel is awesome. They feel really good under the fingers, the fingers, the fingers. Um, very sprightly, very snappy, um, which I quite enjoy. Um, but overall, regardless of what switches are on here, I think the board sounds good and feels really, really good. Those uh, nicely tuned stabilizer keys uh, really uh, do perform nicely. And um, I actually have, since uh, I recorded the, uh, you know, the typing tests, I have uh, gone and added just a bit more lube to the space bar in order to uh, clear up some of that tick that was present um, in the, the initial testing. And I think it sounds a bit better now. So um, overall, really love this keyboard. Really, really nice. Um, the layout for me is not perfect. I kind of prefer 75% myself, but 65% is really uh, a great option for many people that don't need that FRO, uh, that want something a little more compact. And uh, certainly I've been able to do everything that I did need to do with this keyboard, including editing this very video. Um, there is software, as I mentioned earlier. We didn't take a look at it in this video, but I did download it. It is simple, but functional from what I could see. It is still in beta, so, you know, there's not a whole lot going on there, but it allows for remapping of functions on the keys. It allows for control of the RGB backlighting. Um, you know, the basic things that you would expect and want out of a keyboard like this. And it did it all fairly effectively and, and cleanly. Um, so I can't complain about that. And uh, overall, um, I really like this keyboard. <laughs> I don't know what more to say other than I think that NuFi has uh, really nailed it once again with their attention to detail. I've mentioned this a couple of times throughout this video, but it's clear that whoever is designing NuFi's keyboards really does care about the, the quality and the experience with the final product. Um, it's apparent in the, the visual design, the aesthetic design. It's apparent in the way uh, it is uh, very nicely dampened. Um, the sound is nicely controlled and the typing feel is, is very, very strong. Um, and just the overall presentation of the package, you know, with the, uh, the fun extras like the stickers and all that kind of stuff, it's clear that these guys care about their keyboards, the quality of the keyboards and the experience that people have using their keyboards. And honestly, I find that that's often what elevates a keyboard um, compared to, I mean, there's, there's a million and one options for mechanical keyboards out there these days, you guys, and many of them, uh, have competitive features, competitive prices, but it's that little bit of extra care, uh, that really, uh, takes a keyboard from being just a, you know, um, mass market product to something that really feels worth using, uh, as a daily driver, for example. And, um, and Nufi's keyboards have that from what I've experienced between their Air 75 and their Halo 65. So this is the kind of company where I'm very excited to see what they have next because I know it's going to be good and I want to, I want to experience it. So speaking of what they have next, um, the Halo 65 is one of their newer boards, but if you want something that's a little more uh, flushed out in terms of the layout, 
I believe they have recently released a Halo 75, which does have that F-Row, and a Halo 96, I think they're calling it, which has the numpad as well. You can check those out on New Fi's website in addition to the Halo 65. The Halo 65 itself goes for 120 US dollars base price on New Fi's website. The wrist rest, which you guys saw, which looks really, really nice, and for what it's worth, is a unique item that I've never seen implemented like this before. So it's it's pretty uh, it's a pretty special aesthetic uh, that I've never seen elsewhere. Uh, the wrist rest goes for thirty dollars, I believe. So together, one hundred and fifty bucks um, for something that looks this good, for something that sounds this good. I think that's a really, really good price. So um, there's a link down at the top of the video description where you can check out the Halo 65 in both this white colorway and a black colorway is available as well. The wrist rest is available there too uh, in both the ionic white that I've got here and a black colorway too. Oh, and thanks to New5 for the 10% off discount code. How could I forget that? You guys can save 10% on the New5 Halo 65 and its wrist rest using the code ASMR. The code is down in the video description. There's a link there for you as well. But if you use that code at checkout, you will save 10% off your purchase and you'll be supporting the channel while you're at it. So make sure if you're going to pick up one of these that you use that code ASMR for 10% off. So that's really all I have to say. All I have to say, he says after like an hour and a half of video. Um, but yeah, I really enjoy using this. I will continue to enjoy using this. I think the Halo 65 will probably find a place in my regular rotation of daily driving keyboards. Uh, the Gatoron uh, Cross Nufi uh, BBK switches, really fun. Maybe not for everyone, but if you like tactiles with a really nice springy uh, tactility to them, I think you'll like those as well. But the board is available with a whole host of other switch options, including several different linears um, as well. So um, make sure you check out that link and uh, see what uh, NuFi has on offer for you. Well, my friends, thank you so much for watching. I do hope you enjoyed this. Uh, a big thank you to NuFi for sponsoring this video, for sending over the Halo 65 for me to take a look at, and the wrist rest as well, and uh, for me to, to share that with you guys. Um, and thank you to all of you for watching. I hope you found this informative, and I hope you found it relaxing. And I look very forward to having you back here next time. Bye for now, my friends.